the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which got it released not so long ago, represents the icing on Samsung's tablet cakes. These slates, which share most features other than screen and battery size, are meant to entice mobile pros with their highest refresh rate displays, premium material, build quality, and powerful performances. But do these Galaxy tablets go far enough to take a bite out of Apple's tablet supremacy, or maybe with the Microsoft's counterpart of the Surface Go 2? Well, that we'll find out here on Logan the Tech Guy YouTube channel. So as you all know, when it comes to Logan the Tech Guy YouTube channel, it's all about tech comparison. And this time it's not in between two devices, but it's three. I'll be comparing the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus with the Apple iPad Pro and the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Before that, if you guys are new to LTTG, then let me give you a brief explanation. LTTG stands for Logan the Tech Guy and I usually do tech comparison videos and it usually will be in infographic form and sometimes it will be like voiceover like this one. I also do tech reviews and if the time permits me, I will do science and engineering videos too. So yeah, that's it. Do consider subscribing and let's get started. <music> Now, let's start with the pricing. From the value standpoint, you can get the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus from 929 USD, while you can get the iPad Pro for 999 USD and the Surface Go 2 you can get at as cheap as 504 USD. Well, this is based on Amazon price where you can find the links below. It's an affiliate link where if you purchase from it, I will get some commissions from it which will eventually help Logan the Tag Guy YouTube channel to make better videos in the future. There also will be some promo Amazon links too, so do check it out. And those of you who have actually purchased from that link, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now to the display, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus comes with Super AMOLED 12.4 inch 120Hz display. You can work and play on the ultra smooth 120Hz display where the responsiveness display instantly reacts to what's on your screen. It intelligently adjusts the refresh rate based on your content and helps you to save battery as you watch and scroll. It comes with a resolution of 2800 by 1752 with an aspect ratio of 6 by 10 which strikes a nice Nice balance between tablet and laptop friendly use. The display of the larger tablet is simply stunning in every way. Now for the display of the iPad Pro, it comes with 12.9 inch liquid retina display which is considered as the most advanced mobile display by Apple itself. The edge to edge liquid retina display is not only gorgeous and immersive but also features incredibly advanced technologies like ProMotion, True Tone and industry leading color accuracy which makes everything feel responsive and stunning. It comes with a pixel resolution of 2732 by 2048 at 264 pixels per inch. The iPad Pro's display covered 123% of sRGB color gamut, making it more vivid than other panels on the Surface Go and also on an average category of tablets. Now for the Surface Go 2 display, it comes with 10.5 inch touchscreen display. The display is known as Pixel Sense display with 10 point multi touch and it comes with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 with a resolution of 1920 by 1280 with 220 pixels per inch. It comes with an aspect ratio of 3 by 2 and a contrast ratio of 1500 by 1. You can get the higher specs of the Tab S7 Plus with 8GB of RAM with 512GB of storage. It comes with Snapdragon 865 Plus. There's no questioning the performance of the Tab S7 Plus. With Qualcomm's fastest chip on board, the tablets are performing beasts. And with the 6GB of RAM, which is the minimum needed for today's top Android devices, we found out no performance issues here in the Tab S7 Plus. The tab ran a handful of benchmarking apps with no trouble scoring in top percentiles and showcasing smooth performance across the board. More to the point, in daily use, I didn't notice any stutters, lagging or frame drops. These things are top performance whether you are battling Fortnite or just opening an Excel spreadsheet. Now for the processor of the iPad Pro, it comes with the processor of A12Z Bionic and it comes with up to 1TB of storage. For everyone else, the iPad Pro 2020 is the modest improvement to what already the world's best tablet. Performance gets a slight boost with the A12Z Bionic chip. The A12Z Bionic 
SoC instead the iPad Pro isn't much of an upgrade of the A12X Bionic used in the last iPad Pro. But that's fine by us. The iPad Pro already delivered more power than most of the laptops we test and A12Z adds another GPU core for better graphics performance. I might not be the pro user Apple is after but I put the tablet to the test by opening multiple tabs in Chrome and playing games while listening to music on Google Play Music. The tablet didn't do so much as flinch. I didn't experience any lag, stuttering or crashes as I flipped between Windows and navigated between iPad OS. As always, the iPad Pro crashed our performance benchmark, scoring a 4720 on Geekbench 5 overall performance test. That's only a slight improvement over the previous model which is over 4635. For the Surface Go 2, the base model comes with a Pokey Pentium Gold 2, even Pokey eMMC storage and a mere 4GB of RAM. Those packs are enough to get you on the web with a handful of tabs or run a couple of Office, Windows, Next to Outlook but certainly not much more. The upgraded version comes with dual core Intel Core M3 processor, a faster SSD which comes with 128GB and 8GB of RAM. 8GB of RAM is the minimum amount I do recommend to anybody buying a Windows machine with the intention to use it as a laptop. With the keyboard, it will come to around a total of $730. You can add the LTE version of $100 or switch to a nicer Alcantara keyboard to a $30 more dollars than a basic one. All these prices matter because they put the Surface Go 2 in a context. Even though it comes with a $399 US dollar introductory price seems really cheap, but it's not. Slow is not the right word to describe the Surface Go 2 performance, at least not for the Core M3 model I have been using. When you are doing a single task staying within its limit, it feels snappy enough. A better way to put it is to say the Surface Go has a very low performance ceiling. If you try to run too many apps or even a single app that too intense, it will let you know by lagging to a halt. The Samsung Book Cover Keyboard is absolutely necessary to complete the experience of using the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. For starters, it provides a protective shell for the tablets, and I wouldn't want to carry the tablets around without one. The wrap piece adheres to the metal back panel magnetically. It includes a kickstand as well as a flap for protecting and accessing the S Pen. The other half of the book cover connects to the bottom edge. You have to take care to align the pogo pins correctly, but once it's locked into the place, it stays firmly attached. I like this year book cover keyboard much more than I did last year's. The keyboard are much more natural shape and have a good travel and feedback. More importantly, the trackpad works really well. It's relatively large, quick and accurate. It features a dedicated button for taking screenshot, which I appreciate, but there are no function keys for changing the display brightness or speaker volume on the keyboard for the 11 inch model. For what is worth, the book cover keyboard for the larger 12.4 inch Tab S7 Plus model does include function keys. Together, the S Pen and the book cover complete the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, giving it a more productive chops it need to take on the iPad. It's a shame that the book cover isn't included and that it costs much more. The smaller book cover is $200 extra while the larger one is $230. The only saving grace is that for a short time the Samsung is offering keyboards for 50% off when ordering with the new Galaxy Tab S7 or Tab S7 Plus. For the iPad Pro, if you want to deck out your tablet with accessories, the Apple Pencil 2nd generation costs $129, while the Smart Keyboard Folio is another $199. The standard edition for the iPad Pro is the Magic Keyboard with Trackpad, which will ship out for $349. The Magic Keyboard solves all of those problems when it arrives a few months after the iPad Pro. Not only does it have a trackpad, but the backlit keys use the same scissor style switches as once on the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. The accessory also flaunts a new floating hinge mechanism that uses a rigid cantilever hinges to hold the iPad Pro a few inches off the surface for better viewing angles. From there, you can smoothly adjust the angle of the tablet by moving it up and down. The Magic Keyboard delivers a 1mm of key travel and has a USB-C pass-through charging for connecting accessories like external drive or portable monitors. Unfortunately, these features come at a steep price. The iPad Pro 2020 will be remembered as of being the first iPad with mouse and trackpad support. The long requested feature has finally arrived and it works better than I anticipated. 
The Apple Pencil Gen 2 is the among the best stylus I have used, one of the most expensive too, but even at $129, the stylus is a great accessory for students, artists or designers who want to draw or write notes on the tablet. And the double tap feature of changing tools or turning on the eraser works as advertised. What earns the pencil its lofty price is the magnetically attaches to the edge of the iPad and begins charging. It took me a few attempts to find the sweet spot, but its satisfying snap will alert you when you position it correctly for charging. For the Surface Go 2, the keyboard comes at an additional $100 for the Surface and unfortunately that keyboard still has a bit too much flex to it. When I'm using the Surface Go 2 on my lap, if I rest my hand too heavily on the palm rest, it will click the mouse on me and maybe because there are less room for magnets in the bezel, the keyboard sometimes doesn't stay up at an angle where you press down on it. The Surface Go is completely compatible with the latest Surface Pen offering 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and a tilt support for smooth ink experience. Now let's talk about the camera. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus comes with a main camera of 13 megapixel with an ultra wide lens of 5 megapixel. It comes with a front facing camera of 8 megapixel. Samsung actually copy and pasted the camera app from its smartphones to the Tab S7. It's a robust app that actually includes a lot of shooting modes including single take, live focus, panorama, hyperlapse and so on. I found the app open swiftly and was taking quick and good focus photos. Taking photos from tablet is goofy, but at least with the iPad Pro, you can impress your remaining friends with some stunning images. The standard 12 megapixel f1.8 main camera and secondary 10 megapixel f2.4 ultra wide camera capture sharp and colorful photos. The portrait mode selfie I snap with a 7 megapixel f2.2 front facing camera takes a good selfie portrait too. Next to the two rear cameras is a LiDAR sensor. You might have heard of a LiDAR sensor as a technology being used for anonymous vehicles. It's a complete technique that uses lasers to determine the distance between objects in order to create a spatial map of an environment. On the iPad, the LiDAR sensor is used mostly for augmented reality apps. One of my favorite things about the Surface Go 2 hardware is the camera, which is actually on top of the screen when it's in landscape orientation. It works with Windows Hello for logging in with your face and looks much better on video conferences than laptops with puny sensors inside their thin laptop lids. It's one of the benefits of putting all of the computer guards behind the screen of the Surface Go 2. When it comes to battery life, Samsung promises the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus to deliver between 14 to 15 hours of battery life while watching video. And that's what they delivered. I was able to get the tablets to cycle through battery life a few times over the course of a week, but they have always managed at least 14 hours, which outlasts the iPad Pro by several hours. It comes with a battery capacity of 10,090 mAh battery of the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, the 12.4 inch model. The tablet supports charging up to 45 watt charger but they only ship with a paltry 18 watt charger. That's really aggravating from Samsung. I found the S7 Plus required close to 4 hours to charge. Samsung could have at least included a 25 watt hour charger. It's best to leave your Tab S7 Plus at charging overnight. The tablets don't offer any other fancy charging features such as wireless power share for accessories. Now for the battery life of the iPad Pro, it lasts around 10 hours and 60 minutes on battery test which involves continuous web serving over Wi-Fi at 150 nits of brightness. The strong runtime crushes the Surface Pro 7 but falls short of the category average of a tab battery life and it is several hours worse than its predecessor of the iPad Pro previous model. I got around 6.5 hours of battery life using the iPad Pro to browse the web and play games with the display brightness at 75%. Now, for the battery life of the Surface Go 2, if you know the limits, you will have a good experience with the Go 2, but only for 5 or 6 hours max. That's the best I could get out of the battery, even when I was babying it with the fewer apps and lower than usual screen brightness. Microsoft put an ever so slightly larger battery in this year, but it hasn't made a big difference. On any other laptop, 5 to 6 hours would be a disappointment, but not a huge one. But the Surface Go 2 is meant to be an ultra portable, take anywhere kind of gadget, and in that category, this battery life doesn't really cut it. Now, before I jump into the pros and the cons of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, iPad Pro and the Microsoft Surface Go 2, if you like what you're watching, a sub to this channel will be massively appreciated. Now, 
Here are the pros of the Tab S7 Plus. It comes with 5G connectivity with solid processor and RAM. It comes with high quality camera. It comes with large gorgeous display with in-screen fingerprint scanner. It comes with crystal clear audio with expandable storage. It comes with upgraded 9mm stylus and it comes with a great battery life. For the pros of the iPad Pro, it comes with magic keyboard with gorgeous display. It has a faster chipset of A12 Bionic chip which is good for 4K editing. It comes with better cameras with LiDAR sensor and it comes with a studio quality microphones. Now for the pros of the Surface Go 2, it comes with low price with solid design with a kickstand on the rear. It has the increased screen size with Core M3 processor option. It runs any Windows application and it comes with dual studio mics. Now here are the cons of the Tab S7 Plus. Some apps are still not optimized for Android tabs such as Photoshop. You can't use the real PC like Photoshop on the Samsung Galaxy tablets while you can use it on the Surface Go 2 and also in the iPad. And the Tab S7 Plus is actually pricey and Samsung DeX needs improvement. For the cons of the iPad Pro, it's pricey, you need to buy Apple Pencil separately. The previous model is actually a better value and has no headphone jack. For the cons of the Surface Go 2, it has a very low performance ceiling, it has a disappointing battery life and the keyboard is quite flex which is not comfortable during typing. So now I have informed you about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, Apple iPad Pro and also the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Which one is for you. If you really need a small and cheap Windows computer that just about does the necessary small task, then you can go for the Microsoft Surface Go 2, but don't expect much. While if you are going for the iPad Pro, it's extremely expensive, but no other option gives the same combination of performance and endurance. It can be a tablet and a laptop depending on your need. If you are not on a budget and if you don't already own a tablet, then the iPad Pro 2020 is the one to get. And now that it can act as a proper laptop replacement too. While the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus are the only highest quality Android tablets you can buy, there's no question that these slates are appealing as far as the hardware is concerned. Samsung's own apps look and function great on the S7 Plus, but the majority of Android apps fall a bit on their face and is not optimized as the iPad. As long as you can look past the software shortcomings, these are the top Android tablets to get. Before I end this video, this video is made based on my hands-on usage on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, the iPad Pro and the Microsoft Surface Go 2. The views, pros and the cons were made based on my usage on these tablets. There's no compensation and no copy approval provided by the manufacturers to me and there's certainly no any early previews of this video were given to Samsung, Apple and Microsoft. Logan the tech guy works for the viewers, not the brand manufacturers. So that's it for the massive comparisons between the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, the iPad Pro and the Microsoft Surface Go 2. It only comes down to your preference. All three are versatile and boast the upper hand on their own. Which one of these guys will you go for? Let me know down in the comment section. And if you have any thoughts or constructive criticism, do let me know in the comments below. And if you want to suggest any tech comparison to be made in this channel, then let me know in the comments as well. Like this video if you did find this video helpful. And if you want to see more from me, then hit on the subscribe button below and tap on the bell icon. It is always really appreciated. Check out my other tech comparison videos. I will catch you next time right here. Remember, we are still in a global pandemic. So stay safe, all love and peace out.